in the headlines. Voting commences in equity governorship elections across 16 local government areas. President Buhari begins fresh plans in revised policy to eliminate use of kerosene. Monkeypox hits Adamawa State, five cases confirmed. Away from Nigeria, Israeli air attacks hit Gaza after pocket fire. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I'm Dashin Husseina Usman. In politics, a deadline given by the Independent National Electoral Commission to political parties to submit names of presidential candidates and their running mates as well as candidates contesting National Assembly elections has elapsed. INEC had earlier opened its portal for political parties to upload names of their candidates. The portal automatically shut down by 6 p.m. on Friday. 18 registered political parties are contesting in the presidential and national assembly elections scheduled to hold on the 25th of February 2023. While PDP had Atiku Abubakar as presidential candidate with Ifanyi Okowa as running mate, APC will have Bola Tinubu as presidential candidate and Kabiru Masaidi as running mate. Labour Party has Peter Obi as its candidate with Doing Okukwe as his running mate, while NNP NNPP is filled in Rabi Ukonkwesiru as its presidential candidate. Other parties like SDP, PRP, AAC, ADC and NRM, among others, have already named their candidates. Voting is in progress across Ekiti in the state governorship elections holding on Saturday, June 18th. Our correspondent who is monitoring the process gives us an update. As early as 7 a.m., eligible voters were already on their way to their various polling units to cast their vote in the ongoing governorship election in Ekiti State. A total of 989,202 voters are expected to cast their ballot in the 177 registered polling unit across the 16 local government area of the state. This is Ekiti, one of the polling units where the uh, governorship election is holding. But uh, this is actually uh, to nine and most of the polling units visited so far, uh, most of the INEC officials are not there. And we have with us one of our voters here, right here. Morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, what's your name, sir? It's Manu Latif. Uh, sir, what do you want to tell us about the level of preparedness in these uh, polling units? I can see that the INEC officials, the police officers, and uh, NDC, all of them are here. And everybody is looking at their uh, name, whether it appears here or not. So what do you think, uh, how, in your own expectation, how far, how well? Then the, the election is going on gradually and it's going to be free and fair as I'm seeing it. There is no rancor, no stubborn people, no dog, everything. As you can see, every place, everywhere is okay. Uh, this police unit is a union and we are we're happy that we see a lot of people here as turned out because we have all, all those, uh, I think one and something people here and you can see people now, we're almost 50. So. We hope people will stick about to vote. I like you have really tried because this, this unit um something I didn't really believe that it can work out like this. But the, the way I see it, I think I can commend the INEC. Some international observers spoke to Trust TV on the ongoing governorship election. Polling units are recording appreciable number as voters turn out for the exercise. We're here on a joint mission to observe elections and make sure it's a free, fair, transparent, credible process. We are very eager to see how the new reforms will be implemented. So we'll see how it goes today. In polling unit 9 of Irono in Ado Ekiti, which has 1,200 registered voters, INEC officials were yet to arrive at about 8 a.m. as voters were seen waiting. The People's Democratic Party presidential candidate Atiku Abubakar, the national chairman Iyacha Ayu, General Ali Gusau, governorship candidate of the party in Zamfara State, Dauda Lowell, and all the PDP chieftains have sympathized with the families of the 50 abducted wedding guests. The chairman of the PDP Elders Forum in Zamfara State, Ibrahim Bogobedi, who de delivered the empathy uh, message to the victims' families, described the abduction of 50 wedding guests as unfortunate and worrisome to the party and Nigerians of good conscience. 29 of the victims are still in captivity. The report. 
suspected terrorists had on Saturday, 11th of June, abducted 50 wedding guests at Dogon Ao, a community bordering Sokoto and Zamfara states, northwest Nigeria. The victims were returning from a wedding of one of their colleagues at Tambua Town in Sokoto State. 21 victims were said to have escaped into the bush, while 29 are still in the terrorist enclave. The terrorists are demanding 5 million naira each as ransom from the families of the victims, totaling 145 million naira before the victims can be freed. It is against this backdrop that the People's Democratic Party PDP elders forum in Zamfara State visited the families of the victims in Kusau, the state capital, to register their sympathies over the incident and pray for God's speedy intervention and safe rescue of the 29 victims still in captivity. Chairman of the PDP Elders Forum in Zamfara State, Ibrahim Bagobiri, urged families of the victims and other residents of the state to be patient. He believes the security agencies are working hard to ensure that the victims are rescued in peace in no distant time. I am here to sympathize with our people, with our sons, with our brothers, who met an uh, unavoidable fate uh, some days ago. It, is, it was their wish to be here, in part of, to sympathize with us. But because of circumstances beyond the control, they cannot avoid it. So we are preventing them. We wish them quick rescue. We wish them uh, under guidance. We wish them under protection wherever they are. We hope they are going to be released in very good time. Another chieftain of the PDP in the state, Ahmad Yandi, who delivered the message of governorship candidate of the party, Daoud Alawa, described the incident as highly regrettable and condemnable. Say sorry what has happened to your love brothers who are in captivity with the kidnappers, the incidents that took place on two or three days ago. We really regret this unfortunate issue that we are praying to God Almighty that these people come back home safely. The chairman of the Zamfara State Union of Communication and GSM Sellers thanked the PDP high powered delegation for the concern and the love they demonstrated. Federal government says it remains committed to addressing the plight of out of school children and other vulnerable young people in Nigeria using the platform of the at risk children program. Both Deputy Governor of Kaduna State, Hadiza Balarabi, and Special Advisor to the President on Social Investments, Mariam Owais, believe that the program is critical in securing a sustainable future for undeserved children and vulnerable youths in Nigeria. They spoke in Kaduna at the closing of a three-week capacity building program for 649 ARCP youth facilitators drawn from the 23 local government areas in Kaduna State. The report. At Risk Children Program, ACP, is a federal government initiative under the Office of the Vice President in collaboration with development partners. The program is designed to empower youth facilitators with the necessary tools as well as wherewithal that they need to effectively engage, empower, and nurture the primary beneficiaries of the scheme. Kaduna State Deputy Governor, Dr. Hadiza Sabwa Balarebe says the program is geared towards addressing issues of street hawking, people living with disability, orphans, and other vulnerable children in the state. If at risk children are not catered for, this dream will not be realized. Already, many youth still roam the street with only the desire to engage in drugs and other acts of criminality. Earlier, the special advisor to the president on social investments, Mariam Uwais, said the program is targeted at the community to create hope to the lives of the at-risk children. We're trying to create an army of competence and capacity at community level. A lot of these children have been uh, without hope. They don't have any skills. They don't have any education. We're trying to create mentors for them, people that are skilled, who are trained, to be able to nurture them. To First Lady of Kaduna State, Hajia Hadiza Ismail Rufai, 
and the state's commissioner for human services and social development, Hajia Hafsad Muhammad Baba, were optimistic that ACP will drive systemic change and address the concerns of at-risk children in the state. And that the standards of living in our rural communities and parts of the urban communities will be improved through the empowerment of the identified children and young adults. Facilitators have been trained and they in turn will mentor at-risk children. You all know how important it is for us to mentor our children so that they do not fall by the wayside. Kaduna State is the second state after Gombe to commence the implementation of the at-risk children program. Lami Sadiq for Trust TV News, Kaduna. Victims of the attack on St. Francis Catholic Church, Awa Omdo State, have been laid to rest. On Friday, a funeral mass was held in honor of the victims whose remains were deposited at the morgue of the St. Louis Catholic Hospital in Awa. Governor Rutimi Akwere Dolu and his wife, alongside Olusha Gomimiko, a former governor of the state, attended the funeral. Some clergymen, including Bishop Jude Orogunade of Ondo Catholic Diocese and Bishop Matthew Kuka of the Catholic Diocese of Sokoto, were also in attendance. Governor Akwere Dolu, recounting the terror attack, lamented that the government failed to defend the victims of the attack. Recall that no fewer than 40 persons were killed in the attack, which received wide condemnation across the country. It is not here that we'll now be talking about the failings of government. It is not here. I think it will absorb be enough for me to come up and adopt the homily of our homilist. You have said it all. It was, it's so clear to me. Yes, you preach to us to forgive, but you made us also to understand that our Christian faith is not to subdue us it's not for us to say we will just throw our hands up and be murdered and maimed and killed like this. The Delta State Government has rewarded Ejiro Otarigo for averting a fire disaster in Agbaro area of Delta State with 2 million naira. Presenting the award on behalf of the state government, the secretary to the state government, Patrick Uka, commended him for his courage. The report. June 11th remains fresh in the minds of Daltons as courage and patriotism made Ejiro Otariho drive a fire-laden tanker filled with premium motor spirit to a safe place, averting a major fire disaster. For Delta State Government, this act of bravery and concern for the safety of others is one that should not go unrewarded. We have been thinking of how to compensate, how to repair, and how to begin to bury the dead. But God in his own infinite mercies brought you. And you are able to think so nationalistic. Because when we tell people that Delta are not the Kerala's, they look at it from the back side. What we mean by Delta, not the Kerala's, is exactly what you've demonstrated. Accordingly, the Delta State Government wishes to commend you for the rare display of patriotism, humanity, bravery, and heroism by which you saved lives and property at Agba, immediately not local government area of the state. Congratulations, my brother. Ejiro says his move was spurred by his desire to save lives. It was the situation that gave me the decision yeah. that I took. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think anything at that time mm -hmm. because all I was seeing there was death, which I never want to be a part of. His wife is grateful that he did not lose his life while trying to save others. I'm happy because my husband today is a hero. It's not, it's not my making, but God's making, and I give him all the glory for. 
President Mohamed Buhari has restated Nigeria's commitment for a safer and healthier global climate, listing the country's updated nationally determined contribution to include elimination of kerosene uh, lighting by 2030, increase in use of buses for public transport, and reduction of burning of crop residues. In a virtual meeting hosted by President Joe Biden of the United States on Major Economies Forum on Energy and Climate Change on Friday, President Mohamed Buhari said that an updated nationally determined contribution to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change had been submitted to replace the interim contribution of May 27, 2021. President Buhari also noted that Nigeria was developing national frameworks for Article 6 and for carbon pricing, adding that the sectoral action plan for the implementation of the revised NDC in the key priority sectors, which include energy, oil and gas, agriculture and land use, power, transport and water, and waste has been finalized. Improve air quality and reduce Nigeria's contribution to climate change through 22 specific mitigation measures in eight source sectors transportation, cooking and lighting in household, industry, waste, oil and gas, agriculture, power, and hydrofluorocarbon, as well as adoption and the ratification of the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol aimed at phasing out hydrofluorocarbon emissions. The full implementation of these measures would be effective in reducing short-lived pollutants with an 83% reduction in black carbon emission <clears throat> by 2030, compared to a business-as-usual scenario and 61% reduction in methane emissions. These measures are also effective in reducing other air pollutants such as nitrogen oxides and particle matter and also reduce carbon dioxide emissions. This means that the implementation of these measures could reduce exposure to air pollution across Nigeria by 20% in 2030. You're watching Trust News Update coming up after the break. Explosion in mining activities in Nasarawa. Do you stay with us. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. Let's take a look at some of our major stories. We told you that voting commences in equity governorship election across 16 local government areas. You also heard that President Buhari re begins fresh plans to revi in revised policy to eliminate use of kerosene. Moving to health, Adamawa state government says it has confirmed five cases of monkeypox and is examining 57 other suspected cases. The director of public health in the state, Ministry of Health, Dr. Celine Lowry, who disclosed this in an interview with Trust TV in Yola, says the five cases were confirmed uh, on June 12, 2022. Silas Lowang has more. Dr. Lauri said the monkey pox was first noticed between late April and early May at the army barracks and later at the Yola Correctional Facility. She explained that so far the disease has been confirmed in two local governments of Yola North and Yola South. She explained that till date the spread of the virus cut across two metropolitan local government areas of Yola North and Yola South. Lowry assured that to curtail the spread of the disease, an emergency operation center had been set up. Cases were mostly in the correctional center in Yola North, and also there are quite a number within the communities. So on receiving the reports, the, we immediately mobilized and entered the 
the locations and um, the, they were fumigated. You know, and then some commodities were provided for to maintain hygiene amongst the inmates and also within the community. Uh, provisions have also been made for treatment of the cases at the infectious disease center in FMC. While lamenting the lack of information on the disease, the director called for proper sensitization among the people, warning that monkeypox is highly contagious, other than that infected persons should be isolated and proper hygiene maintained to avoid further spread. This disease is mostly prevalent amongst males than females. Yeah, and also within the age group, they said that they didn't get the small, smallpox vaccination. So some people are saying that those that got the vaccination are somehow pro, uh, protected, but we are not sure of that. So it's mostly prevalent among the males than the females. The director further explained that symptoms of the virus include fever accompanied by rashes that look like chicken pox. Monkeypox is a rare disease that caused by infection with the monkeypox virus. From Yola, Silas Lawan. Trust TV News. Nasarawa State is known as the home of solid minerals. Activities leading to the exploration of these minerals are attracting people to different sites where the minerals are located. Abu Bakr Abdullahi, who visited some of these sites, bring us closer to miners and their world of mining. His report is, pre is presented from our studio. Adudu community is located in Obi local government area of the state, and the mineral resources in the area attracts people from within and outside the state who come to engage in different activities in the mining value chain. A visit to the community and indeed some mining sites opens one to a flurry of activities as men, women and indeed children are all part of the search for one mineral or the other. This search takes miners to scary depths below sea level. The workers share their experiences at the mining sites. My job here is basically going inside to bring whatever they worked on. Mining is my job and honestly this job gives me great pleasure. And I benefited immensely from it. People appreciate what we do here. Abdullahi Isiaka, who is one of the site supervisors, explains some of the processes involved in exploring these mineral resources in the mining sites. This is the way we are getting these uh, materials. The way we are producing it, we are producing it. This is the road that you can follow here to Uganda. The place that we are producing zinc and lead. Here, this place, if you just cross this border, it's what I'm telling you. Then you just go direct to the feet. If you go direct to the feet, we are producing lead, the quality lead, what is called costumative lead. A geologist, Aliu Mohammed, tells Trust TV why the state has witnessed an upsurge in mining activities in recent times. Uh, at the moment, due to the economic situation in the country, this seems to be like one of the best options to go into because of the accessibility, considering the fact that uh, this is the home of soil mineral, so there is high abundance of minerals around here. Mining activities are not without health hazards, especially on children. Mohammed explains some of the risks as well as some precautionary measures miners could take to stay healthy. You see, actually a long time stuff. It doesn't just happen like immediately. It takes like uh, years to come. Uh, you begin to find some deformities in bed. You know, the parents that work there for a very long time, oh, people that take uh, water, oh, it depends. We begin to see the deformities in the children, but it hasn't been discovered yet around here. But maybe on the long run, 20 years, 25 years, it could still happen, it may not still happen. Uh, the radioactive uh, element in the areas, mostly around the state and all these places, is not actually high. Deputy Director, Mining Department and the State Ministry of Environment, Ibrahim Yahya, says the department is taking measures to prevent residents from the negative effects of mining activities in the state. Before you start mining proper, you must at least develop a report on how to do the mining how to do the excavation and how to do the refilling of these mining spots. 
So all these things that we're talking about are some of the things that we are emphasizing on every mining company that comes to mine in Nassau State, she must provide all these reports and must tell us the plans on how to excavate and how to plan after excavation. He acknowledged that the sector has become a source of livelihood to many, especially youths and women, hence the increased activities around the sites. Away from Nigeria, Israel has launched air raids on the Gaza Strip after rocket fire from the Palestinian enclave targeted the city of Ashkelon in southern Israel following months of relative calm in the region. Palestinian media said the Israeli strikes fell on agricultural land in Gaza on Saturday, but the Israeli military said it targeted military sites belonging to Hamas, the Palestinian group which rules the enclave. In response to the rocket attack, Israel Defense Forces aircraft struck a number of Hamas terror targets in the Gaza Strip, the Israeli military said in a statement. There were no immediate reports of casualties in Gaza or Israel. There was no immediate response from Hamas nor claim of responsibility from any of the enclaves other in other groups. And finally, in sports, 19 players have arrived at Buda as the Super Falcons opened their camp for the 2022 Women's Africa Cup of Nations. The team is camping in the nation's capital for the tournament built for Morocco between July 2nd and 23rd. The defending champions had their first training at the MQ Abiola Stadium Friday evening as preparations kick off for the competition. Nigeria defeated South Africa to clinch the last edition of the tournament in 2018 and had also beaten perennial rivals Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire to book a place in Morocco. The nine-time winners are in Group C of the WAFCON with Burundi, Botswana and South Africa. For this, we've come to the end of Trust News Update. Don't forget to follow us across all our social media platforms. I'm Dashin Husseina Usman. Thanks for watching.